A steam plant using a castle steam boiler. This is part 12, fitting the condenser oil trap, completing the steam piping and fitting two new gas jets to the burners. Fitting the condenser oil trap is a relatively simple job. There are four bolts to screw into four holes in the baseboard. These are not wood screws, they don't have the same thread. These are called machine screws. If they had a hexagon head, I would refer to them as bolts. But it's a simpler job, just screwing them in place, and they look OK. All the piping is now out of the acid bath and cleaned up. And before screwing the other end of the condenser down to the baseboard, I fitted a small piece of pipe between the exhaust outlet and the inlet to the condenser. After which, I screwed the other end of the condenser tightly in place. After doing this job, I spent a bit of time cleaning up the rest of the piping. Here's the first piece going in place. This is the water gauge blowdown pipe. All of the piping is going to terminate at the same point, which includes the piping to the pump as well. In this clip, I'm fitting the pump. I removed the studs that I fitted to the block to start with, and instead I'm using some 6BA cheese head screws to fasten the pump to the block. I thought this was a better idea because there isn't much room between the pump and the plinth of the engine. After fitting the pump, I connected the top pump outlet, which goes to the check valve on the boiler. I'm making sure that this union is quite tight because when it's in use, there's quite a lot of pressure in this top pipe. It's very important when you build a steam plant like this to make sure you remember to tighten the unions. Frequently I do not until I steam test it. Here's a shot of the three pipes terminating at approximately the same place. I still need to make a bracket to keep these all neat and tidy. Just for a change, here's a bottle of Loctite 542 and I'm using this to seal the threads on the two stainless steel bolts that screw into the end of the condenser. The next part of the job involves piping the condenser's outlet to the chimney. Here's the chimney fitting, and here's a pipe that I made that goes from the chimney fitting down to the condenser's outlet. And just in case any viewers are confused, the fitting, which is the outlet from the condenser, does not go all the way to the bottom. The exhaust outlet fitting on the condenser is a very shallow one and just fits into the top part. The steam tap at the other end of the condenser has a pipe that goes all the way down to the bottom to drain the condensate. The very nice men at Castle Steam, or Castle Instruments as they are known, sent me two new gas jets. These are number 5 gas jets instead of number 16s. I've undone the screws and now I'm trying to get the gas jet holders out of the Venturi pipes. Eventually they come away. The next part of the job is to remove the jets from the existing holders. These are two number 16 jets which are really a bit over the top for this small boiler. To replace these, Castle Steam sent me a pair of number 5 jets which should be perfect for the job. And here they are now, both tightened into the jet holders. Time for a carbon monoxide test. This is not a proper test though because these are running in free air and are less likely to generate any carbon monoxide. Time to fit the burners into the twin flues to see what happens. I turned the gas off first and let them cool. And surprise, surprise, they both made a very nice stereo howling noise. It's possible to get rid of this howling by moving the positions of the jets up or down inside the Venturi tube, but it's not really the answer. If you push the jet holders quite far down in the Venturi, yes the howling stops, but the smell from the chimney is intolerable and the carbon monoxide alarm would soon go off. With Max steam boilers that were made by a man called Mike Abbott, he used to supply a sliding sleeve, but this isn't the answer either. I must say though, the howl sounds very good. A bit like a steam locomotive whistle. Pulling the jets right down in the Venturi stops the howl, but as I said just a minute ago, the smell from the chimney is really, really bad. So what's the solution? We now have number 5 jets which are actually worse than the number 16s for making a noise. Luckily, I have the solution to the problem, and it's a very, very simple one. But in the short time, whilst I've been playing with the jet positions, have a listen. Is that my carbon monoxide alarm I can hear? 
Time to vacate the workshop until all the carbon monoxide has dissipated, which took about 10 minutes. I've relit the boiler, adjusted the jets, and now there's no howling and no carbon monoxide. So what have I done? Oh yes, and there's no bad smell at all from the chimney. It smells as sweet as a rose. I pulled the gas jets further away from the Venturi cross hole. This seems to cause more turbulence in the area of the cross hole, and the gas burns a lot better. The howling is simply stopped by reducing the gas pressure with the tap on the gas canister. Time, I think, for a steam test, but that's in the next episode. As usual, I would like to say stay safe and well, with one addition for this episode. Try your very best not to inhale any carbon monoxide, because of course it can kill you. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.